out for those that are new or seeing my face for the first time. Um, also, my daughter will be joining me. I thought I was going to be able to get ready and um, film this video before she woke up, but uh, she beat me to the punch, which is okay. And she wants to be held because it's still too early for her to be on her own and playing with toys. I tried it and she threw the biggest tantrum, which is okay. Um, so I put on Miss Rachel. That's why she's looking that way. And that's why you can hear, if you can hear the TV in the background, I'm pretty sure you can. That's what it is. Just a little FYI. And again, the glare is going to be annoying and I would take off my glasses, but I wrote down some bullet points and um, I need them to read and I don't want to be holding the paper up to my face. Uh, that's very distracting. And I can't see the paper without them. So we'll just make it work. So anyways, that was a very long intro for no reason. Um, today I wanted to share with you guys uh, journaling. My experience with journaling and how, has, how it's been a very, very therapeutic outlet for me recently. I have always been the type of person who over analyzes everything and I just overthink. I overthink anything and everything that I can. Like, you know, um, I'm pretty sure you understand or that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I was always lost in my head. I was always scaring myself because I was always, I was always doubting myself or like I was always coming up with what if this, what if that, like always looking at the negative side of everything. And um, I was always just making myself feel bad because of that. And you know, they always say that you're your biggest critic. Um, that's literally so true. And I was always discouraging myself in everything. In anything that I was doing or anything that I was planning on doing, I would just discourage myself and just turn myself down like like that like um but last year when she was born when i had her um as you know uh not every woman but a lot of women at postpartum do experience depression and i'm no i don't i say that it was depression because my thoughts definitely did get darker and a lot more heavier on me. Um, I was always feeling down and I I always had days where my light was just off, like my personality was just down and I just felt like crying. And you know, when you feel down like that, your facial expressions and your body language obviously shows that. And when somebody in my family would ask me, you know, are you okay, what's wrong? I I would just turn to tears. I would just cry for no, like, well, I'm not going to say for no reason. I obviously was feeling sad or upset. And there was no, like, specific reason. Like, somebody yelled at me or I got in a fight or something bad happened. It was just a bad day and it was just a bad feeling. Um, so that, that those, those thoughts that I was already having before, just discouraging myself, always being hard on myself, definitely did get a lot darker and a lot heavier after she was born i always found myself wondering like if i was enough if i was doing enough in my life because i was working and i was going to college before i had her and now i'm not doing either of those and i always think to myself like am i a disappointment to my parents because i'm a first gen um first generation mexican american my mom she came to the states when she was eight months pregnant of me and you know her main thing that she has always told me and i'm pretty sure it's true and it's very very common on many households like mine that parents immigrant parents not just immigrant parents just parents in general want the best for their children and um they want their kids to go to college they want them to get a college education so they can get a career and so they can have a better future uh oh and so I was always thinking, like, am I enough? Am I a disappointment to my mom because I stopped going to college, because I got pregnant early? Um, you know, just things like that. And um, you know how they say mom guilt and mom shaming? People in your life around you 
uh, family, friends, just strangers in general, they're going to mom shame you on something that not necessarily they agree with or that they don't do. And I always felt guilty for my with her because I always felt like I wasn't enough for her, that I wasn't doing my best for her. Or when I felt sad, I felt my mom guilt felt even stronger because I'm like, why do I feel sad? You know, I have her and she's happy and she's healthy and she shows me love unconditionally every day. And it just made me feel guilty. Like, why am I having these emotions when my life is good? My life is good right now. Are you okay? Look there. And sometimes when I was like, when I'm laying alone at night or uh, everyone's sleeping, you know, those darker thoughts tend to kick in and time and time and again, I would, I never went to that extent, but I always just had the thoughts of like, what would life be if I wasn't in it? How would it continue? What would my, what, who would take care of my daughter? Um, things like that, just in general, like, how would it be if I wasn't in it? And I never really, I never, it never came to the point where I was like, oh, I'm going to do this to analyze myself. I'm going to do that. Like, I really want to do that. No, not, nothing like that. Just, um, just thoughts of how would life be, how it would be for her and just if I wasn't here, basically. That was, that was hard to do without crying. <laughs> Again, the glare, I'm sorry. I try to look this way, but I'm sorry. We just have to ignore the fact. Um, and you know, like I said, when I was having those bad days, those dark days where my personality was just off and my you can see it in my facial expressions and my body language that I was just tired and really sad and it was, it was noticeable emotions, body reactions. Um, I would get asked by my family, like, are you okay? Like I said, they would ask and I just felt so trapped and because I want to explain to them and I want them to maybe try to understand how I was feeling. Um, but I feel like my sisters are more understanding because they grew up, we grew up like kind of, we grew up together. We grew up with the same upbringings, you know, things are changing right now. Um, our generations are doing a lot more healing, uh, emotionally, physically, healing from my traumas properly and older generations like my mom they go through trauma they go through like neglect my mom she comes from a very very poor background and a lot of things have happened to her so i can definitely say that she has had a lot of trauma in her past and um she never really got the help that she needed because uh my grandpa was an alcoholic and my grandma was just very unattached from her children and it's very sad to say um so she was never able to express herself or nobody ever even thought to ask and that's just the older generation mentality of where oh you're just being denial like you're just being crazy you know the automatic like shut off like no like you're just being dramatic basically and so that's why i was i would feel trapped because although my sisters would understand um my mom wouldn't i felt like i wasn't being heard right and even rigo like my husband he uh, he's learning but he's from mexico and mexico is still very old school and has a lot of older generations mentality and um i try to explain to him and he's very understanding and open to learning and he's changing a lot of his points of views on many many things including my own mental health which i am so grateful for like i was saying i was always like being denied or you know always being told i was being dramatic or i was being gaslighted and um my mom instead of sitting quietly and hearing me out and hearing what i had to say she would teach me a lesson make me feel guilty for the way i was feeling 
and you know that's just not a good feeling you know it, it I just felt so much more worse than I was already originally feeling because I felt like trapped in my own body if that makes sense like my body was just quiet and you know I wanted I would want to cry but in my head I'm like a mini version of me is screaming to her but she can't hear me and that's literally how I felt for the longest time and some days I still do feel that way Rigo like I said he's being more understanding and he's more open to learning about mental health because that's not very talked about in Mexico still so you know I appreciate that he's he's learning and maybe at this point you're, you're probably thinking that you probably should have gotten professional attention you probably went should have went to go see a therapist but I'm a stay-at-home mom and I don't make my own income and Rigo and I right now are living paycheck to paycheck so needless to say there isn't very much financial um, we just can't I can't like it's very expensive to say the least I didn't think I was gonna get like this sorry <laughs> So that's when I turned to writing. Very blunt transition, but when I reached that point where I needed to do something, so I knew I needed to do something. And coincidentally, it's funny the way the algorithm works and God just sends you these things. Like if you're a believer of God, he sent me this. And I saw a video on TikTok, of course, because that's how we're all informing ourselves. That's how, that's where we're getting all of our information nowadays. I saw a TikTok of uh, a journal prompt and it was this page that just posts questions or it's like journal entry number whatever and it had the question or it had a statement that it wanted you to distract describe or talk about and um, I was like why not and then manifestations and affirmations really were popular at one point on my for you page so uh, that's when Get this. Get Uh, what was I saying? So, uh, affirmations and uh, manifestations were popular on TikTok. So, I decided I wanted to start writing things down. And I was always the type of person that liked to write. So journaling came fairly easy to me. <laughs> I need to put it down for this point because I, I want to show you guys my, my journal, the one that I started. But I know she's going to cry. Like my, she loves to play with my clips. I'm going to try to do this um, one-handed. So the first thing when you open my book it has my name and the month and the year that I started it. So I started back in November of 21. And as you can see, I already have like a, a positive quote. It says, stay strong, believe yourself, never give up. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, I um, those are just like, you can pause that and read it if you like. They're just 
uh, different manifestations, little quotes that keep me to kind of lift up my spirits. Like some of them says, speak what you want into existence. Ask for you want ask for what you want and prepare to get it. I'm no longer afraid to of what could go wrong. I will calmly think of solutions to any problems that may arise. Take the risk or lose the chance. You know, different manifestations, different quotes, different positive little sayings or limericks or whatever they're called. Here. You want this? Or what is it that you want? This? She wants the marker. Okay. And, you know, like this manifestation on the first page says, Everything that I need, I already have. Everything that I have is all that I need. Anything I desire, will I will receive. Because my reality is created by me. I am successful. I am peaceful. I am free. I am wise. I am potential energy like a phoenix. I should arise. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am power. I am talent. I am mind. I am body. I am spirit. I am balance. I am enlightened. I am fearless. I am outside of the realm of time. I am a part of the all and I am one with divine energy, energy, energy all around me on the outside and in me. There is no hate in my heart. I even have love for my enemy. Energy, energy, energy. So that's just one little, I guess that's a manifestation, I think, um, that I have. And then I started writing down like what I was thankful for or like this one. Um, I started writing down my prayers. Um, when I, when I was, when I'm praying to God, I, I tend to write about like what I'm thankful for or like help on any problems or situations that I'm that I was facing in that point of time or like give me signs or you know just talking to him being very thankful being voicing my concerns to him in those prayers but even when I wasn't like specifically talking to God I would just write about a bad day or any negative thoughts or feelings that I was having um just so I can that was like my form of releasing that energy that negative energy that I had in my heart and in my body so yeah like as you can see it's just like page after page of writing my fears my what I was worried about what I'm guilty about um sad negative mad thoughts problems problems I was having my family like I said giving God thanks I like even throughout all the times that I was being negative with myself, putting myself down, I still tried to manage to give God thanks. I try to be thankful um, for what I have and for what he has given me. Like you see, it just goes on and on. Like it's from November 2021 20, up until now, June, um, July 22. Uh, so that's basically what I have. Uh, this is where I'm at now. As you can see, I have not, I have a little bit left to go. Uh oh. She dropped the marker, which is very, very important to her. And like I was saying, um, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's basically what I, I started writing about. But then, um, you know, when somebody was causing trouble in our lives or spreading hate or rumors or stuff like that, um, I would pray about it. I would pray for them and I would write it down or if I'm... So I'm editing this video and I know at this point I sound like very religious. <laughs> And you can you might be assuming that I might be Christian or whatever, but I just as an FYI, I do I was brought up like as a Catholic. I have a Catholic upbringing, and I do still do many common Catholic practices like baptisms, communions, things like that. But I don't go to the church regularly, so I guess some people might disagree that I'm like full Catholic um I just talk to God a lot and 
you know, I just make sure my relationship with him is good because I am a believer and whatnot. So, yeah, I just wanted to leave that here. Or if I'm wishing somebody the best, I would pray and I write it down. And when I'm asking for forgiveness, strength, and patience, um, I pray for it and I write it down. Uh-oh. Here you go. Please stop dropping it, Mom. And you guys don't need to be, I just want to say this, you don't need to be religious about journaling like I have. If you don't believe in God, if you don't have a religion, um, you definitely don't need to write, pray or write down your prayers. Of course not. This is just what's helped me and what I'm writing down personally in my journals. Um, there are no, there's absolutely no rules to journal or what to write about or how to start even um you just write what you're feeling and that's basically it just write what you're feeling your doubts your fears whatever troubles you're going through that you're stressed about past trauma maybe um just things like that things that are bothering you and like me there's days where i had a good day I, no negative thoughts, no problems whatsoever, and I thank God for what I have, because I, I make sure to do that every night. Um, sometimes I feel like I didn't write enough, or I still feel like writing and I want to write more. Um, uh, what do you want to, you want this? You can look up online or on Pinterest or whatever um, some deep analytical questions that you can answer about yourself, about yourself, about your past or your perspective on different topics and anything. Um, I'm gonna put up some pictures right here of screenshots that I've taken off of Pinterest. Um, they're just questions that I found that I liked and that I want to write about. Um, so I wrote them down on separate sheets of paper and I folded them up and put them in this little Ziploc bag. And so basically what I'm, I want to do, cause I just, I just did this yesterday and I wanted to start it today. Actually, um, each day I will pick out a random one and you don't even need a fancy notebook like this. I have a bunch of these at home. So even getting one of these is fine or even just getting single line sheets of paper and putting it in a folder or putting it in a in a binder whatever you have like if writing and journaling is something you want to do you don't need a book in specific i have this because i was given it was given to me while i was pregnant by my sister because she originally had it for sketching and um i guess she didn't want any more or she had two and she just gave me one and i never knew what i wanted to do with it until i decided to start journaling and that's why i use this but since i'm running out of space and i want to do these um i'm just gonna use a spiral notebook which is perfectly fine you know it's it's paper you know i can write on it and it's gonna serve the same purpose um so let me just i'm gonna read one and i'm gonna pick one and read one to you so you kind of get the vibe that i'm of what i'm doing so i'm just opening it and this one says be honest how does life feel right now and you know basically i'm just i would just go into like great detail of how life was like if life right now is happy for me i write down i'm that i'm happy and list all the reasons why i'm happy and kind of go into detail of why those things are making me happy right now and that's just that's just basically the idea and here I know it might not look like a lot but I counted them and it's like 160 so it's a lot I have if I'm just gonna do one a day I'm pretty set I'm like pretty much set for the rest of the year honestly um, so yeah touching back on to what I said earlier there are no rules to journaling um, really I I didn't watch any YouTube videos, but I did make the search and I seen a lot of titles like how to journal, how to start journal, what to journal. And I didn't watch them, like I said, so I don't know 
if that was just the title and or what they were saying in those videos but personally I feel like there isn't any rules to journaling you just well the way I used it was just as an outlet to express my emotions that I felt like were being trapped in me and I felt like that was a very good expressive therapeutic outlet for me so that's why I'm saying like there shouldn't really be any rules on how to journal uh, that's just my personal opinion and then I'm gonna put a picture here of an article that I found because I did um, search up the question on Google can writing be therapeutic and this article uh, I'm gonna read a quote from it and it says um, you can screenshot it as well so later on after this video or if you want to go look it up right now um, it says you can go do that so a quote it says practitioners have used journals journaling or other forms of writing to help heal from stress and trauma and I felt like that was very interesting so that's just I just wanted to add a little snippet in there but definitely go check it out and do your own research or if you already have a therapist you know ask them about it and maybe you can try that out um, another reason why I do love to journal and to write uh, sometimes I write in the morning but mostly all the time I do it at night like for example this if I have any problems or any issues with my family that is very heavy on my heart or it's causing me to be distracted or whatever or if I'm just talking to God and expressing my feelings to God I do it at night but like I said these little writing props I'm gonna try to do them in the morning and then that the black journal I'll keep doing it at night but the reason why it's helped me is because when I write at night it helps my brain to relax because I'm the type of person that when I'm laying down unwinding from the busy day my mind starts to wander about this that and a thousand other things of what could have happened what should have I done what should have I said oh discouraging myself being hard on my body because I have a lot of insecurities about my body and you know saying that I'm not good enough blah 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 so I you know I just write down everything that I'm thinking in that moment and that usually helps my brain relax and I can go to sleep much faster because my brain already put those thoughts somewhere and I already wrote them down so my brain can now focus on resting so I feel like that's that's very beneficial for me and if you're struggling with the same thing where you lay down but you feel like you don't go to sleep for hours later um, because your mind is just rolling 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 thinking 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 try writing it down what are you thinking about write it down and um, try if that helps because I know it did for me uh, yeah so if you're like me and you feel like you don't need to seek professional attention definitely do give writing a try I really do recommend trying it out um, like I said there's no specific way on how to journal or what to write or how to write or how to begin a journal you just need to write and express yourself that's very important and um, if you feel like journaling isn't helping and writing is just opening up wounds from past trauma that you have or have had um, I really do encourage if that's the case to seek professional help um, schedule a consultation and or an appointment with a therapist um, I I'm a really big advocate with my family and my friends about mental health and taking care of yourself so your mental health is what's more important and it's a necessity to put yourself first okay a necessity you, you need to put yourself first so you can have some peace of mind do you like the shell <laughs> and um you know some things that i always say is always always remember to take care of yourself 
always remember that everything in this life is temporary. Pain, emotions and feelings come and go. And although it might be some some might be harder to get over than others, but eventually you will. Um, there is help everywhere. If you're if you feel like no one you can't nobody is there to help you. Um, trust me, if you seek help, you will find it. You are enough. You are enough. You are loved. And you are never alone. Trust me, you are never alone. Don't be afraid to communicate. And I always say this with my sisters. Don't be afraid to communicate your feelings with those closest to you. If something is really bothering you, try telling somebody try telling somebody and <clears throat> i'm pretty sure you will find some peace of mind in that as well um and sometimes sometimes asking for advice from your loved ones can help and can be beneficial but sometimes when you ask somebody that's too involved in that situation or knows you too well probably won't sometimes sometimes won't give you the best advice or if you're seeking for a different perspective of somebody that is not in your family um ask somebody else somebody that doesn't really know you maybe like an old friend that you haven't talked to in years or an acquaintance a peer from school or a co-worker somebody that doesn't really know you ask them like hey can i ask you a, um some like a question that is very it can be personal and um if you're comfortable with it of course only if they're comfortable and you know tell them i want you to be honest is because the only reason i'm asking is because i, I need an outside perspective another point of view that is in, that isn't in my life that doesn't know me personally and maybe that can help you know try to get a look sometimes when you're too close to a problem or you're looking at it too closely or focusing on it too much it's hard to get to see the bigger picture of things so sometimes looking at it from a different angle or from a different point of view can be very beneficial so <clears throat> i really highly recommend that and yeah guys so that's pretty much all i have and i'm sorry that i was a little distracted by my daughter um i'm ha i'm happy that she's here with me today and i love her i she's with me every day but i just mean like in general like i'm thankful that i'm in my point of life where i have a daughter <laughs> and she is also my ultimate biggest blessing but postpartum really was hard it was really hard and i i lost touch with myself because i stopped caring about myself because i kept you know it's normal you put your baby's needs before yours so i lost touch with myself and <clears throat> that's why like i said um at postpartum my thoughts got heavier got darker got a lot more stronger and so i'm happy that i found journaling and writing because i feel like it did help me a lot and I know I feel relief after I write. And you know, writing isn't the only thing I do. I obviously do talk with loved ones. I, I'm i still in that ongoing battle with my mom of trying to have her understand and look at my point of view, trying to change her uh, older generation mentality. And she has it's been going good so far um i definitely do want to what do i what uh, i definitely do want to meet with a therapist i do want to go to therapy i feel like um besides like having depression i guess having my sad thoughts and whatever um i need to learn how to control my anger not necessarily because of the baby, but because when I get angry, I just get like built up tension in me, and I, I get choked up, and I start to cry. Like I'm those one of I'm I'm one of those people where I, I cry because I get stressed out or I get too frustrated in a situation, 
and I feel like a lot of tension in my hands and I I just need to like I try to breathe I try to breathe through it I close my eyes I count I think of something that's calming and relaxing and you know having children isn't always blue skies and sunshine it's gonna be hard some days they're gonna throw tantrums and you're not even gonna know why obviously because they don't know they don't know how to talk yet and so I'm still learning the way she communicates I'm still learning the way I'm still learning her and I I know my daughter you know I know when she needs something but there's some days where I don't know I don't have a clue like recently um, she was constipated and in pain but at first she she was like pooping fine but she was hurting and I didn't know what it was so that really like stressed me out or she was crying really really bad one day for a couple of days and I didn't understand why um, until like she's are you bored right here now and um, I didn't know why why she was crying so much until like I slid my finger on her gums and I felt that one of her molars um, were starting to burst through her gums so I was like okay she's having a toothache she's having gum pain <sighs> like I, I finally found like a like some relief knowing what it was and I can give her like soothing gels and stuff and luckily she was able to get over that or not get over it but like feel better but for a while there I did stress myself out I was getting very very frustrated I was crying alongside with her because I didn't know how to help her and uh, I feel like I'm not very handling those emotions properly and I would really like to talk to a professional and see what I can do what are some techniques and I would really like to have somebody ask me very deep and personal questions to really get down to the core of things um, <clears throat> but yeah so one day in the future hopefully in the near future um, I can make that appointment and start seeking help professional help but yeah uh, I really do love journaling uh, I hope you guys try it out uh, let me know how it works out for you and if it doesn't that's completely fine you know it's not gonna work for everybody but it's definitely beneficial definitely uh, yeah guys so thank you so much for being here with me and I hope you enjoyed this video um, I hope you guys took something out of it your mental health does come first you are a priority in life so always make time for yourself and I hope you guys did enjoy this video uh, thank you so much for watching and subscribe like comment share and I'll see you hopefully in the next one bye so I just finished editing this video and I just want to say that it was very hard for me to get through this video. Not because I was doing a whole bunch of different editing and then and adding so much to it and changing it and altering it. No, I wanted to keep it as raw as I could, as serious as I could, because this is a serious topic. But it was hard for me to get through for the sole purpose that um, in my day-to-day -day life, I don't really notice how bad it is. My ums, my like, my pauses, how many pauses I'm taking, the length of my pauses, of the way that I'm talking. And I just want to stop the video every time I say um and smack the side of my head. I want to stop the video and smack the side of my head every time I say like, like, um, uh, I'm looking around, I'm looking around, I'm so distracted in this video and I just want to apologize. Um, I still am getting, like, see, I say um. I'm still getting used to talking to the video, to making videos and talking to the camera. And, you know, it's a work in progress. You know, you just got to work with me. I'm sorry. I will practice my speech and I will get better. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and for being here with me. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.